Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at an updated version of the Google Sheets CRM system which I built and demonstrated in previous videos. Uh, I've added quite a few new features to the system and modified a few things about how it behaves and I think that if you're looking for a CRM system which you can use to track customer interactions as well as provide invoices for work that you've done for your customers and automate some of that then hopefully you'll find these upgrades useful. In this video I'm just going to give an overview of how the system works and in the next few videos I'm going to be going over the individual sheets, formulas and the different script files which make the project do what it does so that you can implement this for yourself and customize it as you need to. To start with, there are five sheets. I've got an invoice sheet. I have a sheet for prices and rates. You might use this for product prices or labor rates, things like that. I have an invoice history sheet, which doesn't yet have any data in it, but this plays a very important role in tracking your customers' invoices and seeing what kind of outstanding amounts that different customers have. I have a client list sheet, which is very similar to what you would have seen in my previous CRM videos. However, there's a fair bit more information over this section, which we'll take a closer look at shortly. And the last thing I have is a client sheet template. This is basically how your individual client sheets will look as you generate them. And again, this works very similar to how it worked in the previous CRM system. This template, should always remain here. It simply provides a template for the script to copy when it's creating new customer sheets. Okay, so I'm going to start on the client list sheet and you can see that we have some basic information about these customers, like an ID number, the address, the email address, the name of the primary contact and a contact phone number. We've also got a column called paid up, but I'll explain that in just a bit when we come to it. All the data on this sheet, except for what's in the paid up column, is just plain text strings. So you can enter whatever you want in here, and it's not going to affect anything else that you've got going on in the sheet. As you do get new clients, you can simply add their data along this line here, and then generate a sheet for them based on the information that you've got here. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. And as you can see, these businesses do not have any sheets at the moment, but we can generate an individual sheet for each of those simply by pressing this button up here, scan for and build new client sheets. So I'll run that script and down the bottom here shortly, you'll see it's populated with individual client sheets. There we go, we've got four of them. And coming back to the client list, this first customer has an ID number of 6011 and the primary contact is Jim. We can see that that information exists over here as well. However, unlike what I had with my last update, these are dynamic ranges. So they're actually looked up from this client sheet rather than being fixed values. Uh, and that means that this information can be changed as needed. and the changes will be reflected on the individual client sheets. Now let's say that you have your client list here and you go ahead and add someone else. Let's say that I just added uh, Jerry's air freight uh, and that no sheet yet exists for him. However, we do have sheets for uh, Kakoi Crepes, Nichols Jansing and Red Sun Holdings. We only want to create a sheet for Jerry's Air Freight. Uh, we can do the same thing we did previously. Simply press the button and the script will skip over any sheets which exist and simply create the one that we want. So again, we have Jerry's Air Freight and we still only have four customer sheets. Once these have been created, you can go ahead and populate these information fields with all of the more detailed information like people that work there or their computers, passwords, usernames, things like that. Any kind of information that 
might be useful to you or that you come across while interacting with the customer, you can dump onto this sheet and organize it as you please. And you can also organize each individual customer sheet differently depending on what kind of customer it is. The forms section that we have over here functions in exactly the same way as it did in my previous uh, iterations of this project. We can fill out our forms here if we do get a call from this person. And we can submit that data down to the relevant call history log section down here. Uh, and that will keep building up and up and up. So you always have a record of every call which your customer has made to you and what you did for them when they called. Back here on prices and rates, there's nothing really special going on with the information here. You can customize this as you need to. And we simply have a basic header row with some frozen rows up the top here, but there's plenty of space there for you to expand it if you want to add more complex information about these products. Now taking a look at the invoice sheet, this should look pretty familiar if you've ever worked with invoices. Um, and again, most of this is customizable by you, so long as you're aware of what all of the different cells do. I have my information up here on the left-hand side for my business and also how the customer can pay for their bill. Of course, this is all made up, as is all the other customer information in the sheet, but you would enter your own company details and payment details in these fields here. On the right-hand side of the sheet, we have empty fields for our customer data as well as data validation in the customer field. We can choose that drop down, and we can choose any of the customers which exist on our client sheet. So if I choose Kakoi Crepes, you see that all this relevant information here is transposed over to these fields here so that we don't have to enter any of this information ourselves. And we also have an invoice number here, which is procedurally generated from the uh, invoice history sheet but I'll show you that in just a moment. And we also have the date here, which is automatically updated by a script on a regular basis. So it should always have today's date in it. But if you're entering an invoice in advance or maybe one uh, from the past, you can change that date simply by double clicking on that field. And we get a date selection panel and we can choose a date in the past or we can choose a date in the future. For now, I'll just stick with today. The main body of the invoice form has data validation fields which refer to my prices and rates sheet. There are only three items on that sheet and like I said you can add more as you need them. I'm just going to choose that guy there and we'll see that the charge column is populated with the relevant price there. We do need to specify a quantity so let's say that we spent two hours helping this customer our line total will automatically be calculated as will our total due and we have fields for a discount if you want to provide a, a discount to that customer let's say 20 percent the discount will be automatically applied and we can also specify a total paid if we want to if for example the customer paid a deposit we can enter that guy in here and that will be subtracted from the total as well of course we can add more lines if we want to. And everything will be automatically updated. Once you've built your invoice as you like it, you can come to the bottom of the page and hit the print button. That'll run a script which takes all of this information and builds a PDF file, which you can then email to your customer. So I'll take a look at my PDF invoices directory and wait for it to refresh there it goes and what we have here is the name of the company the number which was on the invoice as well as the date that it was processed you can modify how this behaves if you want it to look differently but i think that's just the most important information that your customer is going to need to see when they come to pay that invoice if we open the invoice we can see that it has all the information which we specified displayed in a in a neat PDF file. And now you can simply take this PDF file and attach that to the email which you send to the customer. When I created that PDF, I also added the invoice history 
So if we take a look at that, you can see that a line has been created in the invoice history with all the relevant information. It doesn't worry about individual items. It only cares about the total due and the customer and the invoice number. By default, it will put unpaid into this field here as well, which you can then change as you need to using the data validation dropdown. And we have some fields over here, some date fields. Uh, these are essentially just um, warnings for when the invoice has been unpaid for a certain amount of time. If uh, this date, which is currently 30 days in the future, if this date is in the past, the cell will turn red, and so will these ones if uh, those dates are passed as well. So that gives you an indication of how late the customer has been in paying their invoice. And if I adjust this date to uh, something terrible, we can see that these fields go red, and we can also count the number of days that the invoice has been outstanding for. At the top of the screen, we can see our last invoice number as well as today's date. That's really just for your own reference when you're looking up the uh, invoice dates. And coming back to the invoice sheet, we can also see that all the fields have been blanked. So all the items, uh, quantities, and the customer details have been blanked. So we're ready to start again and create another invoice, and I'll do that now. So I'm going to create a bunch of random invoices for different customers. And as I'm doing this, you'll see that the invoice number is being incremented. Uh, so as I submit this one, we have invoice number 0652. When these fields are blanked, it jumps to 0653. So we don't need to worry about constantly incrementing that. It will do it automatically. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a bunch of invoices in here. Um, they all have their relevant invoice numbers, and we can also see those in the invoice history down here. However, once this fills up, it's going to be very difficult to understand the information we're seeing here, especially if we want to know just about a single customer, let's say Red Sun Holdings. We want to know how many invoices do they have which are unpaid, and what's the total value of those invoices. So we can come to the individual client sheet, and we'll see over on this side that we have two outstanding invoices with a total of 1575. And we can see the individual invoice numbers here, as well as their individual totals. Okay, so that's the basics of how this Google Sheets CRM system works. We have individual client data sheets. We have a template sheet, which we're copying. We have a master client list. We have a comprehensive invoice history of all paid and unpaid invoices. We have a sheet for our prices and rates of labor or products. And we have an invoice form, which is partly automated and can automatically generate a PDF copy of an invoice for you, which you can then email to a customer. So I'll be going over the individual components of this system in the next few videos and talking about how each different component works and how you can customize it yourself and implement a similar system for your own business. I'll also be making all of the code which I've written available to use for free, as well as samples of this sheet at the end of the series so that you don't have to start from scratch. You can take a template of my spreadsheet and modify it to suit your needs. Anyway, that's it. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.